Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss about the topic cytoplasmic inheritance. The main objectives of today's lecture are to know the basics of cytoplasmic inheritance, to understand the extranuclear inheritance by organelles, to understand the essential features of organelle DNA, to explain the examples of mitochondrial inheritance to explain the examples for the plastid inheritance. Dear students, let us first begin with the introduction to cytoplasmic inheritance. As we know, most of the characters of an individual are governed by nuclear genes. However, some of the traits may be controlled by extranuclear factors or genes. When the transmission of characters from parents to offsprings is governed by cytoplasmic genes, it is known as cytoplasmic inheritance or extranuclear inheritance or extrachromosomal inheritance or also known as non-Mendelian inheritance or organellar inheritance. The factors governing the cytoplasmic inheritance are called plasmon or plasmogenes which are present in the chloroplasts that is cpdna or mitochondria that is mitochondrial dna the characters which are inherited by plasmo genes are inherited in uniparental fashion by the female therefore it shows reciprocal differences in the f1 generation the best example of cytoplasmic inheritance in animal cells is the mitochondrial genome and in case of plants it is plastid that is chloroplast genome. The presence of DNA in chloroplast in plant cells was first demonstrated in 1962 by Riss and Paul while as a year later in 1963 the presence of DNA in mitochondria was proved by Margit M. K. Nass and his co-workers. Further observations from time to time by several scientists have been reported about the critical role of cytoplasm in genetics. The circular mitochondrial genome with approximately 16,000 base pair has genes for ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA and approximately a dozen mitochondrial proteins including polymerase. Although chromosomal genes specify the vast majority of mitochondrial proteins but the mitochondrial genome has considerable variability and mutates more radially than the chromosomal genes, in part due to poor proofreading during DNA synthesis. The resulting mutations are the source of considerable cytoplasmic genetic disease as well as phenotypic variation in normal mitochondrial function. Cytoplasmic inheritance also occurs for centrosomes usually via the sperm in mammals. Cytoplasmic inheritance of viruses occurs in some situations. In these cases, there is a nucleic acid sequence specifying a cytoplasmic component. Dear students, let us discuss now the Mendelian versus non-Mendelian inheritance. We know that in eukaryotic organisms, the inheritance of most of the characters exhibit two basic characteristic features like one that the contributions by both female and male parents are equal so that the results from reciprocal crosses are identical and second that the segregation produces the characteristic ratio of 3 is to 1 in F2 generation of a monohybrid cross and a typical ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in dihybrid crosses. This type of inheritance pattern was first demonstrated by Gregor John Mendel with his classical experiments with pea plants and is referred to as Mendelian inheritance. It is universally accepted that genes showing Mendelian inheritance are located in the chromosomes of eukaryotic nuclei. Therefore, Mendelian inheritance pattern is regarded as a sufficient evidence for a gene to be located on a chromosome. Such genes are termed as nuclear genes or more commonly simply as genes. 
but some characters in several organisms do not show Mendelian inheritance or they show a non-Mendelian inheritance pattern. In such cases, the following characteristic feature are observed. One, there is consistent difference between the results from reciprocal crosses, generally only the trait from female parent is transmitted. Second, in most cases, there is no segregation in the F2 and subsequent generations. Characters showing non-Mendelian inheritance may be grouped under three broad categories. One, those related to cellular structures and patterns. Second, those produced by intracellular parasites, that is symbionts and viruses. And third, those associated with DNA-containing cell organelles with like mitochondria and chloroplasts. In addition to these cases of non-Mendelian inheritance, some characters in several organisms exhibit a Mendelian inheritance pattern, but the development of these characters in an individual is markedly affected by the genotype of the maternal parent of the concerned individual. Such cases are classified as maternal effects. Dear students, this was about Mendelian versus non-Mendelian inheritance. Let's now discuss the genesis of cytoplasmic inheritance. Long before the advent of molecular genetics, ciliates enjoyed a period of success during which they were strongly associated with non-Mendelian phenomena and in particular with the question of cytoplasmic inheritance. They had become the favorite models of a few biologists such as T.M. Sonneborn who believed that Morgan's chromosome theory fell short of explaining all heredity and could not be itself with no role credited to the cytoplasm account for complex phenomena such as development and evolution. The early discovery of mating types had made paramecium one of the first single celled organisms in which genetic analysis could be conducted. Although many characters were found to follow Mendelian inheritance and were ascribed to nuclear genes, it was observed from the very beginning that a number of heredity characters did not behave in a Mendelian way. One of these non-Mendelian characters, which could hardly have been ignored by the paramecium genetists, was the mating type itself. Opposite mating types were shown to develop from identical genotypes and in some species mating types even proved to be cytoplasmically transmitted to sexual progeny. Reciprocal crosses can be used to detect maternal or cytoplasmic inheritance in animals. The example of maternal influence was reported by Arthur Boycott in 1930 who was studying morphological features of freshwater snail Lemnia peregra. In snail, the shell and internal organs can be arranged in one of the two directions, that is right-handed dextral and left-handed sinistral. Boycott crossed the two types of snails in the form of reciprocal cross and found that the shell rotation of the F1 hybrids was the same as their respective mother and that of the F2 hybrids was all right-handed and segregation in the ratio of 3 is to 1 occurred in F3 generation. In this example, the maternal influence due to female nuclear influence was found. The trait is determined by both the nuclear genetic system, a single gene with right-handed allele dominant to left-handed allele, and the maternal nuclear influence. From this example, reciprocal cross can be used to detect both nuclear and cytoplasmic genetic systems as well as their interaction mechanism. In addition to the nuclear genetic system, the cytoplasmic genetic system is mainly transported by the DNA of extra nuclear organelles, such as mitochondria and chloroplast. These organelles also contain genes which inherit uniparently. Furthermore, in plant and animal breeding, reciprocal cross is widely used 
to identify cytoplasmic genes resistant to diseases and to detect beneficial cytoplasmic nuclear interactions for enhanced performance of some traits to be improved. The question of how the mitochondrial and chloroplasts came to have these specific sets of genes is still a matter of experimentation and debate in biology. Part of the answer is to be found in the origin of the chloroplasts and mitochondria themselves. It is generally believed that these two organelles arose in the course of evolution as endosymbionts. Specifically, cells of ancestors of eukaryotes were invaded at different times by the prokaryotic cells, one of which was photosynthetic, giving rise to chloroplasts, and other of which was non-photosynthetic, giving rise to mitochondria. These invasions set up mutually beneficial symbiosis. This symbiosis was a critical event in the origin of the lines that eventually became modern eukaryotes. However, the ancestral invading prokaryotes must have contained many more genes than are found in modern mitochondria and chloroplasts. The evidence suggests that some of these genes were lost whereas others found their way into the nucleus. The precise set of genes that remain in the ordinary of modern eukaryote is somewhat variable, although a core set tends to be found in most organisms. There is likely an adaptive advantage in having some ordinary genes located in ordinary itself. The differences between organisms presumably are due to different migration patterns of the ordinary genes in the evolution of different eukaryotes. Most modern eukaryotic cells are fully dependent on the ordinary genes for their normal function. Hence, what arose originally as an optional symbiosis is now obligatory. Nevertheless, it is known that some organisms can survive without their mitochondria or their chloroplasts. For example, the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae can obtain energy from fermentation, a type of chemistry that does not need the mitochondrial genes. Hence, mutants that lack mitochondrial genes survive. In another example, some plants can survive saprophytically without their chloroplast genes. Dear students, this was about the genesis of cytoplasmic inheritance. Dear students, let's now discuss the cytoplasmic inheritance in detail with examples. Like the topics, extranuclear inheritance by cellular organelles, cytoplasmic inheritance by mitochondria, cytoplasmic inheritance by plastids, significance of cytoplasmic inheritance. Let us discuss these topics one by one. First, the extranuclear inheritance by cellular organelles. Extranuclear inheritance is defined as the inheritance of trait of only one of the two parents, generally the female parent to the progeny or offspring. Whereas the reciprocal crosses show consistent differences as well as there is a lack of segregation in F2 and subsequent generations. The true cytoplasmic inheritance is one that involves mitochondria or mitochondrial inheritance seen in both plants and animals and chloroplasts that is plastid inheritance seen in plants only. The total of the genes present in the cytoplasm of a cell is known as plasmon. All the genes present in a plastid or the genome of the plastid are known as plastomes. In the same way, all the genes present in a mitochondria are called chondriomes. The genes present in plastid and mitochondria are located in DNAs and are known as cpDNA and mtDNA respectively. These DNAs are collectively termed as ordinary DNA. Dear students, let's now discuss the essential features of cytoplasmic DNA. The cytoplasmic inheritance is governed by genes that are found in mitochondria and chloroplasts and these genes are known as 
plasma genes or cytoplasmic genes or cytogenes or also as extranuclear genes. These genes are found in chloroplastus DNA that is cpDNA and mitochondrial DNA that is mtDNA. The synthesis of nuclear DNA takes place only during interphase of the cell cycle while as the synthesis of mitochondrial DNA as well as chloroplast DNA continues throughout the cell cycle. Usually the nuclear DNA is linear in the eukaryotic system and circular in prokaryotes. But generally the cytoplasmic DNA is a circular molecule except in ciliate protozoa where it is a linear molecule. The organelles DNAs are directly associated with the inheritance of some phenotypes which are not controlled by the nuclear genes. Cytoplasmic DNA is autonomous and is capable of transcription and translation processes like nuclear DNA. The code only for the limited number of enzymes and polypeptides as well as chlorophyll and other pigments are synthesized in the plastid. The genetic material of mitochondria and chloroplast is transmitted almost exclusively through the egg or female gamete and that both nuclear DNA as well as cytoplasmic are liable to mutation. Any mutation of nuclear DNA leads to alteration in nuclear genes and likewise any mutation in the cytoplasmic DNA leads to change in the behavior of plasma genes. Dear students, let's now discuss the cytoplasmic inheritance by mitochondria. Mitochondria can self-replicate and represent another genetic system in the cell. Of course, the amount of mitochondrial DNA is so small representing less than 1% of nuclear DNA in mammalian cells and it can code for a part of the protein in the mitochondria. The genes present in mitochondria in some cases control the inheritance pattern and are transmitted through the cytoplasm of the egg that is the female gamete. The synthesis of cytochrome found in mitochondria for example is known to be present in minute amounts in cytoplasm under the control of the nuclear genes. Therefore, it is suggested that both mitochondria and chloroplast seem to have a semi-autonomous existence and their DNA forms the basis for genetic systems separate from that in the nucleus. The examples of mitochondrial inheritance include inheritance of kappa particles in paramecium, pokiness in neurospora, and petity in yeast. Dear students, let's now discuss in detail the inheritance of kappa particles in paramecium. There are two types of strains in paramecium. One has kappa particles in its cytoplasm and the other does not have any such particles. The presence of kappa particles in the cytoplasm leads to the production of a toxin known as paramecin. This toxin can kill the strain of paramecium which lacks kappa particle. Thus the strain with kappa particle is known as killer strain and that without kappa particle is called as sensitive strain. So multiplication of kappa particles in the cytoplasm takes place by fission. However, their multiplication is governed by dominant nuclear gene K that is capital K that can multiply in the homozygous dominant that is capital K, capital K or heterozygous that is capital K and small k individuals. Kappa particles cannot multiply in the recessive condition that is when homozygous small k, small k is present. Even if kappa particles are introduced into KK strains, they will gradually disappear due to their inability to multiply and the strain will become sensitive. Though the multiplication of kappa particles is dependent on nuclear genes, their action is independent of nuclear genes. 
The inheritance of kappa particles can be studied by conjugation between killer and sensitive strains. The transmission of kappa particles that is the killer toxin is through cytoplasm but maintenance of kappa particles and production of paramecene is controlled by K in the nucleus. We assume that the killer strains carry dominant alleles KK and that sensitive KK. Therefore, this trait is transmitted through cytoplasmic heredity. The trait is only stable is killer strain. Dear students, let us now discuss another example that is sigma particles in drosophila sensitivity to carbon dioxide. In drosophila, two types of flies are found with regard to carbon dioxide sensitivity. Some flies are sensitive to carbon dioxide exposure and some are fairly resistant. The sensitive flies become immobile when they are exposed to carbon dioxide concentration and may even die sometimes. A cross between sensitive female and normal male produced all sensitive individuals in F1 generation. The reciprocal cross that is normal female versus sensitive male produced all normal offsprings in F1 generation. This suggested that carbon dioxide sensitivity is inherited through the cytoplasm. Investigations using electron microscopes have demonstrated that a virus like particle called sigma is responsible for sensitivity to carbon dioxide in drosophila melanogaster that is fruit flies. Dear students, let us now discuss cytoplasmic male sterility in maize. In case of male sterility in maize, pollen grains of such male sterile are aborted. This male sterility is transmitted only through the female and never by the pollen that is from male side. When all of the chromosomes of the male sterile line were replaced with chromosomes of the normal plants, the line still remained male sterile, showing thereby that male sterility controlled by some agency in the cytoplasm. It was later recognized that cytoplasmic male sterility in maize results from alterations in the heredity units in the mitochondria, that is mitochondrial DNA. Dear students, let us now discuss the another example, pokiness in neurospora as a mitochondrial inheritance. Neurospora, a bread mold, has two types of strains such as wild and pokey. Where the wild strain has normal growth and the mutant strain pokey has very slow growth. A cross between pokey female and a normal male had produced pokey progeny. Where in the reciprocal cross normal female versus pokey male all the progeny were normal. This suggests the presence of cytoplasmic inheritance because the only difference between the reciprocal cross was in the contribution of cytoplasm. Later on many other cytoplasmic genotypes were discovered in fungi and many of them were very bad growers or slow growing. In such mutants, mitochondrial cytochrome content were altered. This indicated the involvement of mitochondrial DNA in such mutants. Dear students, let us now discuss the cytoplasmic inheritance by plastids, that is plastid inheritance in detail with examples. The inheritance pattern of plastid characters due to plasma genes located in plastids is known as plastid inheritance. Plastid inheritance was first case of cytoplasmic inheritance to be discovered independently by Coral Correns and Bauer in 1909. The inheritance pattern of the genes located in plastids is best studied in plants like four o'clock plant or Mirabilis jalapa, Zia maize, Primula sinensis and species of Oenothara. Dear students, let us now discuss the variegation in four o'clock plant Mirabilis jalapa as a chloroplast inheritance example. 
the first evidence of cytoplasmic inheritance was reported by Corrins in 1909 for leaf color in 4 o'clock plant Mirabilis gilapa. This plant shows three types of leaves at different branches, namely green, white, and variegated. Variegation refers to the presence of white or yellow spots of variable sizes on the green background of leaves. So variegation may be produced by some environmental factors, some nuclear genes, and in some cases, plasma genes. When green was used as female and green, white, or variegated as male, all individuals in F1 were green. When the white was used as female and green, white, or variegated as male, all individuals in F1 were white. When variegated was used as female and green, white, or variegated types as male, in the F1, various proportions of green, white, and variegated individuals were obtained. The results from different crosses of leaf phenotypes of Mirabilis gilapa or 4 o'clock plant clearly suggests that leaf phenotype of the progeny is as same as that of the female parent. The phenotype of male parent did not contribute anything to the progeny. This phenomenon is referred to as uniparental transmission. The egg provides the bulk amount of cytoplasm containing many plastids and the male gametes contribute a negligible amount of cytoplasm. Therefore, plastids present in the cytoplasm of the egg are responsible for the appearance of maternal color in the offspring and the failure of the male plant to transmit its color to offsprings is reasonable. It is clear that variegation is determined by agencies transmitted through the female and that it is not influenced by the type of pollen used from the male. These agencies are the chloroplasts. They are capable of cell duplication and are transmitted from generation to generation through the cytoplasm of the egg that is from the female parent. So seeds born on a green branch have three genes, only green plastids. Seeds born on a pale green branch have three genes, only pale green plastids and seeds born on a variegated branch have green or pale or green or a mixture of the two types of plastids. So variegation is thus a heredity character determined by stable self-duplicating extranuclear particles called plastids. Neither the nucleus of the female gamete nor the male gamete is involved in the control of this type of heredity character. Now let us discuss the plastid inheritance in Oenothara plant. The plastid inheritance in evening prime rose or Oenothara was reported by Renner. In some species of Oenothera, entire chromosome set of either pistillate or pollen parent of an individual is transmitted to the gametes. Thus, gametes have either all chromosomes of the female parent or of male parent. Such inheritance of chromosomes in block is due to complex series of reciprocal translocations. Such inheritance is exhibited by the cross between two species, while as Oenothera murkiata and Oenothera hukiri. Cross between Oenothera muriceta female and Oenothera hukiri male produced normal green plants in F1 generation. However, the reciprocal cross between Oenothera hukiri female versus Oenothera municata male resulted in yellow plants in F1 which were unable to survive. This suggests that muricata plastids can develop normally in the presence of hukiri nucleus, but hukiri plastids cannot develop in the presence of muricata nucleus. Sometimes hybrids between Oenothera muricata and Oenothera hukiri exhibit variegation in course of time like reciprocal cross. These yellow patches in later stage were explained due to the presence of hukiri 
plastids. Renner assumed that some plastids of Fokiri pollen are transmitted to the hybrid. After multiplication, they resulted in somatic segregation of plastids in the later stages of hybrid producing yellow sectors. Dear students, let us now discuss the epizome in bacteria. Some hereditary particles have been found to exist in two states, either in an autonomous state in the cytoplasm, whereas they replicate independently of the chromosomes, or in an integrated state incorporated into the chromosomes. Particles with such properties are known as epizomes and include such things as the sex factor. The epizomes are apparently not essential to the life of the bacteria because they may or may not be present. If they are absent, they can be acquired only from an external source. In bacteria Escherichia coli, sex is determined by the presence or absence of the sex factor that is F. Male bacterial cells that is the donor have the sex factor and this factor is responsible for the transfer of the DNA from male to female bacterial cells that is the recipient. This sex factor is the cytoplasmic particle. Dear students, let us now discuss the significance of cytoplasmic inheritance. Cytoplasmic inheritance has been beneficial in explaining the role of various cytoplasmic organelles in the transmission of characters in different organisms. Studies of cytoplasmic inheritance have played a key role in the mapping of chloroplast and mitochondrial genome in several species such as yeast, chlamydomonas, maize and humans. Development of cytoplasmic male sterility. Cytoplasmic male sterility lines have been developed in many crops like maize, pearl, millet and cotton. The availability of cytoplasmic male sterility lines has helped the production of the hybrid seeds in these crops at a cheaper cost than with hand mescalation and pollination methods. Whereas the cytoplasmic male sterility, cytoplasm can be easily transferred to many agronomic bases for their use in the development of superior hybrids. Another one that the development of cytoplasmic male sterility, several crop plants like maize, pearl millet, sorghum, cotton, etc. have been produced. The role of mitochondria in the manifestation of heterosis and mutation of chloroplast that is DNA and mitochondrial DNA leads to generation of new variants. Such variants are of special significance especially in ornamental plants. To conclude, organelle DNA plays an essential role in inheriting certain traits in organisms and it shows that the variant phenotypes caused by the mutations in organelle DNA are generally inherited maternally. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding cytoplasmic inheritance. Hope you have understood it well. See you with a new topic next time. Till then, bye bye.